to the security council and national law not being able to understand where our targets are, we're not really trying to learn about it. So to tie it all together into the self perpetuating machine that we can't ever break from. Mm. So I'm just trying to figure out how like how does it end, who's in control, how do we find out, we can't find out. Okay, we're in Angel, here's my hands or not. We're not supposed to do anything about it. <coughs> Let me just mention a few things constitutionally in terms of your powers in the Constitution. Mm. Uh, in our Constitution, the U.S. Constitution, uh, Congress has been vested with the powers to declare war. That's true. That has mm. taken place uh, only twice in our nation's history. In practice, the President's commander in chief powers have been used to uh, to wage war or battles or skirmishes or whatever term you want to apply predominantly in our history. Uh, and it has been the executive power that has predominated over the congressional powers in the in terms of the war powers of the general constitution. Uh, sorry, sorry, I had a question. I'm glad that you've got some better experience. I'd also like to make sure that you know what the color is. They can read that in my bio. <laughs> yep. I ask you to you keep it to one brief question. Okay. Before the breakup of the Soviet Union, it was communism with the Soviet Union. Today it's terrorism. I really ask you all if you would just focus on the meaning of suspect and what that means in our constitution and the principles upon which that that based. And the definition of war. She brought this up. What is this war? It is a unnecessary, all necessary use of force. But yet it's referred to by the politicians as war, by the public as war. But it's not. There's no declaration of war. What is this? Where does this war end? Where does it begin? Where where does it go? Is it worldwide? Is it every country in the world? The intelligence. How do we decide who these people are? They're suspects based on intelligence in a intelligence in an isolated tribal area through ID and I, I, uh, enemy combatants. How do you do that? Hmm. We didn't have the intelligence to, to uh, whether or not to go into Iraq. It was wrong. Mm -hmm. And yet we're making decisions about killing people. But then when we, we kill innocent people, that just ticks people off and produces more Osama bin mm -hmm. And is that helpful to us? We'd like to argue that, you know, how you do that, you know. You know, there's this idea that these drones are Dropping bombs just by some guy sitting. Uh, oh, it's based on intelligence. It's based How on do you know? Where do you get that intelligence? You get it from an isolated tribal region where you've got tribal factions that run against each other, and in one tribe says, "Oh, I'd like to get rid of my enemy. I'll just make sure that, he, mm -hmm. that he's a terrorist and send that information to the U.S. so the U.S. takes him out." How do you know we're not doing that? At least from a military standpoint, and from my friends that are in the thing. For every drone strike that we launch, at least by the U.S. Army and the military in general, we have special forces operators on the ground. Not just in Afghanistan, not just in Iraq, but in Pakistan. We have them in Yemen. We have troops on the ground in these countries. And to uh, this idea that these we're just flying a plane over, taking a picture, and launching a bomb is a misnomer. We have special forces troops operating all over the globe in connection with the CIA, in connection with you know, other militaries and the Pakistani army. I mean, these troops are not, you know, you have to have spotters on the ground, you know. Like sometimes they want to grab these guys, not just launch a bomb at them, because that, that to kill Osama bin Laden, we, it was, it was, Political in the sense because you really couldn't capture it because then what do you do with it? But there's other lower level ranking people in these military things, and I put a lot of some of them in prison. So they provide intelligence to other people in their cells. I mean, it's just 
This idea that you have some guy sitting in Colorado flying a plane, uh, sitting in a plane launching missiles, is kind of a misnomer. We have soldiers on the ground in these countries that are providing the intelligence. They're the ones get it from somebody on the ground here. Thank you. Sorry. We're going to have time for one more question really quick, and we're going to try to keep it really brief with our answer as well. This gentleman up here in the front row has a question. Yes, try to keep it brief and a brief answer. Okay, so uh, obviously the problem is about using force in other countries um, where you might upset the local rules and you might create other enemies. That. So if we're concerned, and that is concerned about suspects who might possibly attack the United States or other citizens, what other options do we have other than the use of force? Hmm. I'll take I'll take a stab at an answer while we're flying. Um, what happened after World War II in the Nuremberg Circuit Trials, where, mm -hmm. where it was common after the war to basically line up and shoot the enemy that you were fighting for. Uh, but instead, there were trials. Uh, that were held, uh, that were tried in one year and tried in other there. Most of them were convicted. Uh, a few were acquitted. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, argued that it also had an effect in helping to create a peaceful Germany for that one forward. Uh, so that's one possible Uh, thank you very much. I'd like everybody to give a warm welcome and a applause to our panelists. And also, I'd like to thank the people that organized this. Seal Meyer, Sue Willis, Dan Kenny, Ray Ty, and Kevin Zichterman. They worked really hard to put this thing together and uh, give them a round. Uh, it's, I think Seal wants to, to close the, the seminar here with uh, some words.
drones and not just them to be a project. 